glorious, glorious, and glorious. Would you grab your swords, please, which is known as your Bible? Remember, these are training missions. Well, this is training. We're in training. This is not about religion. Jesus never came to bring religion. He became, it said, the word says he came to bring a sword for those involved in the military operation. Jesus is the chief and commander. Amen? And you are called to be a part of this operation. It is to rescue the world. It is to rescue as many souls before time is up because there's a time sequence that everything must be fulfilled and we want to get everything done in a certain time. And we are on the move right now because time is running out. Amen? In 1 Timothy chapter 4. Did you get refreshed this morning? Praise God. Not refreshed. Refreshed. Amen? If you got refreshed, something's wrong. You missed it. You're drinking out of the wrong cup. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, in the area of being a Christian, which means Christ-like, to be a Christian means to desire Christ's presence. If you're not desiring Christ's presence, how can you be a Christian? That's where people fall in the arena of religion. It's really not Christianity. Christianity is an, a religion because the word religion means bondage. Christianity means anointing of God Almighty to bring people free and like him. The word says imitate God as dear children. We are joint heirs of God Almighty. We are now the expression of who he is. Where they'll be walking well pleasing to him. We're to be able to see those things that others don't see. What separates us from the world? Being baptized in the Holy Spirit puts you and I into another dimension. But the enemy wants to kick us out of there all the time. Because when you're not involved in that third dimension, you can't see everything. And the enemy easily sways people. Look what's going on in the world right now. We see so much corruption, so much lying, so much... You know, people don't realize, but there is a political fight. And I want you to know that the body of Christ is a political party. We are called the righteous party. And there is a battle because Jesus, the Word of God says that the Son of God came. He was born to come and bring a government, amen, and a military. So in this, we want his government. That's why he says, pray thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's his government. That's his kingdom. That's his political we are in a war, and every day is a battle. And one of the things that we've got to see, and one of the things the Holy Spirit put on my heart today, he says, we must begin to understand before the fall. In other words, before anything is done in our life, we've got to see beforehand. So we want to be able to see it through. There's a, there was a fall before, before the fall of Adam and Eve, something occurred. Before the fall of me and you, whether it's a wrong decision, amen, a mistake, that's called a fall. Anything that is not upright and perfect is called a fall. Even though some falls are not counted against us, do you understand that? There are some falls that are leading to death, and some falls that are not. Because you put on a, an address, a wrong address, and mailed it out doesn't mean it's a fall leading to death. 
Amen. <laughs> or you put the stamps on, on upside down. You know what I'm saying? So there are certain things that are not leading to death, but then there are things that are leading to death. And 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 is now the Spirit expressly says. Now when you hear that the Spirit is expressly saying, he's saying, I'm shaking people to wake up. That in their latter times, are we in the latter times? Yes. Some will what? Depart from the faith or fall from the faith. Giving heed to deceiving spirits and what? Doctrines of demons. Many people don't even understand this. A deceiving spirit is a demon. And he comes with an agenda and a doctrine and a plan. And it's to cause mankind to fall away or prevent them from ever connecting with Christ Jesus. Because that's the only way out. In verse 2, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marrying and coming and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. You know, the word believe we know that means follow. But I want you to understand there's another word that is connected with this word. Not only does it mean follow, but it means agree. Agree. Everyone say agree. So when you see the word believe, it means that you're, what you're agreeing with is what you're following. Now, if you're agreeing with deception, you're following deception. If you're agreeing with a lie, you're following a lie. If you're agreeing with the truth, you're following the truth. So what you agree with, so there's an area to where before anything, we must discern what we agree with. If you're not discerning what you agree with, you'll end up with a fall. Something is going to happen. Amen? You know, the Holy Spirit always warns us ahead of time. And your relationship with the Lord must be an understanding of knowing God's unction and His voice. I'm telling you, I know uh, man, you be driving, and next thing you, you, uh, this thought will come. You know, there's a stop sign behind that tree because it's hidden. I also like to know when there's an officer up ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> But he tells us things to come. We can avoid a lot of accidents. We can avoid a lot of falls, a lot of destruction, a lot of things if we would just begin to discern what we agree with. So we're going to talk today before the fall. It's simple. Before the fall. Before what fall? Before anything that's out of order according to God's will is considered a fall. In verse 4, for every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of good doctrine, which you have carefully followed. But reject profane and old wise tales. Exercise yourself towards godliness. But bodily exercise profits a little, but godly is profitable for all things. Having promise of life that now is in of that which is to come. That is a what? Faithful saying and worthy of acceptance. For to this end we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God. So we labor and suffer reproach because we trust God no matter what's going on who is the Savior of all men, especially of those who believe. These things command and teach. And let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. In other words, the Spirit here in the beginning in verse 1 expressly said, in other words, he's alerting, he's warning before the fall of following or agreeing of something that's going to cause harm. 
He's warning. Remember, believe means to follow, but it also means to agree. Because you're not going to follow with something you don't agree with. Amen? So in this, it is an alert warning before the fall of following or agreeing. It will result by influence or enticements of the power <laughs> reserved in demonic entities. Now, the power reserved in demonic entities is called pride, P-R-I-D-E. And it's also known personal reverence into a deadly end. But this is a reserved power. It's power reserved in a demonic entity. Do you know that your old man is a demonic entity? Amen. That's why you must be born again. It carries an influence. This power is power that chooses not to submit or obey or follow or agree with the fullness of Christ's request. Remember, there is a power to choose. Amen? Power means force. You have a choice, a power to choose. You have the power to say yes to agree or disagree. You have the power to believe or not believe. That is the power within you by the new creation of Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit. But there's a power of the old man. It's the power of pride. And that power is strong and it's always combating the new man. It is power reserved in demonic entities. Even accursed items have a power reserved in them. Amen? Why? Because an accursed item is a demonic entity. People don't even realize they got them in their homes. They're driving around with them in their cars. Or maybe even in their pocket. In Genesis chapter 3, before the fall, What's the fall? It could be destruction. It could be trouble. It could be affliction. It could be losses. It could be wrong choices. Genesis chapter 3. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 1. It says, now the serpent was what? More cunning. More cunning. Very crafty. Lying. Deceiving. Deceptive. Then any beast. The word beast here, of course, of the field, which means fallen angel. Which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now I want you to grab hold of something. Before the fall... Of mankind, which was in the garden, the fall started with an agreement. Amen? Does everybody understand it? It started with an agreement. You don't think that she walked by that serpent all the time? Of course, he kept saying, yo. Psst. What was he trying to do? Always plant something. See, just because nothing happens then doesn't mean the plant, plant's not there. When you hear something, there's a plant. Even if you reject it, it's been planted. So the woman said to the serpent, which she started gotten a discussion with him, first, he finally got her attention. He laid a question before her. It wasn't even a question. That question was a challenge. It was a compromise. It was an area just saying, do you really believe God? And a woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. So she knew the truth. 
she knew what she agreed. She knew. So she already agreed with what God said, but the serpent was causing another agreement. See, when you begin to agree with darkness, then you begin to disagree with light. Amen? That's the whole focus of the powers of darkness, is to get us to agree with darkness so we become blind and disagree with light because there's an exchange being made. You can't hold both. You'll exchange one for the other. Then the servant said to the woman, you shall not surely die. Now he called God a liar. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open. He even lied more. He was convincing her that if she partook, that she'd become blind. But she didn't know it. The serpent would then become invisible. Because that dimension would be shut off. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So the woman agreed and saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes and tree desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband and with her, her and he ate. Now, I'm not going to go into this whole detail because this is just symbolic because the word tree represents spirit. We know that the woman was seduced and had two children. Hello? I said I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Called Cain and Abel. Hallelujah. They weren't really picking fruit off the trees, all right? Hallelujah. And so then the, both of their, then, then the eyes of both of them were open, but they were actually closed in the spirit room. And then they knew that they were naked. Hello. They didn't know they were naked beforehand. No, because they were clothed with glory. They were eternal beings. Not anymore. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves a covering. And they heard the, vo the sound of the Lord walking in the garden because they couldn't see him anymore. In the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves because fear now gripped them. They never knew what fear was. Then the Lord called to Adam and said, where you be? Like he didn't know where he was. He was testing him. And so Adam said, I heard your voice in the garden. I was what? Afraid. Why? Because Satan's power brings fear. His greatest weapon is deception, but his power brings fear. That's how he controls. And the Lord said to him, who told you that? In other words, where did you get this other voice from? And immediately the Lord said, did you get this from the serpent? He knew. See, so in this, before any fall, there's a voice. There's an unction. There's an enticement. There's a temptation, which is all a voice. It comes in multiple different ways. It's trying to influence me and you to make a destructive decision. Fearful, prideful, destructive, troubled, afflicted, or a place of loss. The devil's always trying to steal what God has given me and you. That's his job. This is where you have to look where you are right now. Because if there's stealing, destroying, or death, and I don't mean death of just a person, but I mean death of vision, death of growth, anything to that degree, the devil's got access somewhere. Does everybody understand it? It's, the word says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The Lord comes to bring what? Pros prosperity and life and life what? Abundantly. And I don't mean just financial prosperity, amen? The greatest prosperity you can grow in is being close to him and knowing who you are in him and who he is. To know him is the greatest of anything. And you can't worship someone you don't know. Is everybody Okay. So before the fall, a covenant and trust was built between Adam, Eve, and God. 
The cunning serpent pounded Eve to entice and intent and cause agreement to follow the voice before the fall. Even though she knew the truth and the consequences, a corruptible seed of doubt and rebellion was planted in the memory, becoming a stronghold. So when a lie is planted in a memory, it's called a stronghold. That's what's called a memory lie. Why? Because the enemy, see, you don't know when he's planting that seed. He doesn't activate it right away. He begins to water it, and you don't even know what's happening. And the next thing you know, you're doing something you can't believe you're doing. I can't believe I said it. I can't believe I did this. I can't believe I, I didn't do this. Before the fall. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And anything you and I are doing, whether it's a project, whatever it is, it could be a simple thing. We always look at it as, is it working? If something is breaking down all the time, then there's, of course, we know that things wear out and certain, but if something is being stolen, destroyed, whatever, then there's the enemy getting access to it. There's something access to it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3, let's speak it. For though we walk in the physical or the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh, physical realm. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical or carnal, but they're mighty in God for pulling down what? Stronghold, which is a what? Memory lie. That is a lie that's been planted in your memory that you don't even know is there. That's a corruptible seed. It says, casting down arguments. Where are these arguments? In your thoughts. In your thoughts. Remember, the devil comes to bring fear. Paranoia is fear. Anxiousness is fear. Anxiety is fear. All of these things are fear. Oppression is fear. So if we're not willing to examine these things and look at these things, we stay in a bondage state of being until we die. And we don't want that. God came to bring freedom. Freedom. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Not where the familiar spirit is. Not where a doctrine of demon is. Not where a spirit of fear is. That's not freedom. Amen. Not where a spirit of rebellion is. That's not freedom. Not where there's a spirit of hatred, jealousy, lust. All of these things allow the access to the enemy to take over our life. For our weapons are not physical, but they're spiritual. Pulling down memory lies, exposing them, casting down arguments from the enemy. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, the truth of God. Bringing every thought, every thought, every thought, every thought. Man, if we would bring every thought into captivity, we wouldn't have the problems we do. There'd be no such thing as addiction. Think about it. There would be no such thing as bondage. This is where the battle is. It's not a 100-yard football field. I don't know how many meters it is, but it's a puny brain with big mouths. And bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of what Christ says. And being ready to punish those things. When all, uh, punish all disobedience when your obedience is what? Fulfilled. <laughs> wow. When your obedience is fulfilled. Pulling down, <laughs> I want to say, 
flying words. <laughs> Flying fiery words. These are words of corruption, shutting down the push of influence that argues repeatedly until it forces an agreement. The devil doesn't let go. He argues with you repeatedly and forces an agreement. That's how he operates. The Holy Spirit leads. The devil forces. He pushes. He pounds us until we agree, unless you get rid of them. Amen? Then what happens is he, bring, he controls us in this area. It's forced agreement. or So we got to expose it, break its control, and remove it by the light of the truth of God Almighty. In Galatians chapter 5, before the fall. So we see that there was a fall before Adam because of a voice. Jesus said, who told you that? Who told you that? Who told you to lie? Who told you to protect yourself? Galatians 5. Everybody okay? Listen, we are seeing this happen tremendously. I mean, I, I, if you and I did the things that's going on in this political realm right now, we'd be arrested. We'd be thrown in jail and sentenced for many years. I don't understand why these individuals can get in front of the nation and lie. And get away with it. It's just incredible to me. When they have the documents right there and they still lie. Promote a lie. And promote destruction. Cause division. But you got to remember something. We're not fighting flesh and blood, are we? This is a battle. It's a battle over this country because God's hand's here. It's a battle between the race of eternal and the race of damnation. It's a battle. In Galatians 5, verse 1. And in this war, and this is where we must come to an understanding, there is a war and there's battles. And if you're not in the battle, you'll become a casualty. Amen? In verse 1, Galatians 5, let's speak it. Stand fast, therefore, in the freedom by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, or religious, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ. You who attempt to be justified by the law, or by the letter. You have fallen from grace. Fallen, fallen from grace. Wow. In other words, you've fallen from the plan of God or the plan of escape. Justification. Justification is parallel to compromise. When an individual compromises, he's justified. Because in this, a person goes back to works instead of relationship. It goes back, back to what I, I do instead of what he's done. There's a difference. Is everybody okay? Verse 5. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Here it is. Before the fall. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion, everyone say persuasion. Uh, that's influence, isn't it? Enticement. This persuasion does not come from God. Who calls you? A little leaven, which means also evil, leavens the whole lump. Wow. Wow. Persuasion, it is to the place where the power 
reserved and demonic entities. Pride to choose the demonic instead of the new. Choose darkness instead of light. It is where the old man takes over. In Second, Tim in Second Peter chapter one, before the fall, before destruction, before trouble, before affliction, before losses. In verse two, is everybody okay? Grace and peace. Grace is the plan of escape. When you're in God's plan, you're at peace. When you're not in God's plan, you're at torment. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge, which is the truth of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power, not demonic power, but divine power, has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Wow. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, in other words, if you're consistent and you put them into practice, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins or old man. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace, plan of escape, brings peace. The knowledge of God are his words of wisdom. By choosing to agree and follow, and follow them brings the power of the divine nature. I'm going to say that again. The grace is God's plan of escape, which brings peace. The knowledge of God is his words of wisdom. By choosing and agreeing with them and following them, it brings the power of the divine nature over the carnal nature. Or what we might call pride. Power reserved. And demonic en entities. And Proverbs 16. Before the fall. If you get an opportunity today, I encourage you to read the decree of godly thoughts in the prayer booklet sums it all up. Proverbs 16, verse 17. Before the fall. Before anyone's fall. Before any mistakes. Before any destruction. There is a voice that comes, sometimes many. Hallelujah. Ooh. Let's go to verse 16. Let's speak it together. The what? The highway of what? Of how much better to get wisdom than what? Gold. And get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. See, you may know the truth, but if you don't understand it, it doesn't become truth. There's a lot of people that know the truth and still are in bondage. Because if you're not 
understanding and discerning the truth, you're not putting it into practice. It's been nullified. Verse 17. The highway of the upright is to what? Depart from evil. And, and it, again, you know, it's not about running away from evil. It's departing or rejecting the voice of evil that causes false agreements. He who keeps his way preserves his soul. Pride goes before what? Destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be of the humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Pride, personal reverence to a deadly end. It's power reserved in demonic entities. The end result is destruction, death. In 1 Peter chapter 5. How many of you know you can be prideful in something but not another thing? It only takes one prideful thing to open a door. First Peter five five. Likewise, you younger people. This is not about age. About immaturity. Hallelujah. Submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with what? Humility. For God resists the prideful. Now think about this. God resists the power reserved in demonic entities. He resists them because it's demonic. He doesn't give his plan of escape to demonic he sets judgment on them. But God gives grace to the what? Humble. That's a way of escape. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting your care upon him for what? He cares for you. Be sober. Be alert. Be vigilant. Be consistent. Because your devil walks about like a what? A roaring lion. That's a big mouth. It's a pounding voice that doesn't quit. Seeking whom he may what? Devour. It says resist him. Too many people agree. Resist it. Resist him. Resist that voice. Steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world, so you ain't the only one going through it. If I got to resist him, so do you. Hallelujah. But may the God of all grace, of all escape, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you've suffered a while, hopefully you'll get it, perfect you, establish you, strengthen you, and then settle you and position you so you don't repeat it. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen? See, what begins to happen is the demonic forces, God resists the pride, you know, and the, the power reserved in the demonic entities, which is associated with people and items. Amen? You may have an item. Again, we call them a cursed item. They release a demonic frequency. We call fiery darts. It's a demonic frequency. They're carrying corruptible seeds to disconnect to the voice of freedom. They want to disconnect us to the voice of freedom and reconnect us to the voice of deception and bondage. And of course, we know that pride, using pride to protect these strongholds of the mind or thought patterns, we must resist and disconnect from all of these agreements that cause problems. But listen, if you're not in God's presence enough and connecting, you won't discern these things. If you're not in true repentance, you won't discern these things. Amen? The blood must be activated. You can't just say, Lord, forgive me and continue. It don't work that way. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. 
All happy days. Before the fall. Ephesians 6.10. Finally, my brother, be what? Strong in the Lord and the power of his might and not our own. Put on the whole armor, whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the trick of the devil. Many people still don't even put on the armor of God. Well, I don't need to put it on. God knows. Yeah, he knows you're an idiot. Hallelujah. Verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against what? Spiritual hosts of what? Wickedness in heavenly places, unseen. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Dress for battle in a spiritual war. Don't fight physical, but spiritual. <laughs> it's a political war in the physical. War of governments that rule each nation, city, town, state. We are, again, we are called a political party called the righteous or the truth. <laughs> in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? How many know God is speaking to each and every one of us in this room? Amen. Verse 1. But know that this, that in the last days perilous times will come. Are we in perilous times? I mean, really, let's look at this for a second. I mean, it's crazy out there, man. It's crazy. For men will be lovers of themselves. Hello, me, myself, and I, my will. You know? Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. And from such people turn away. For these are those who creep into households, ministries, businesses, and bring down gullible men and women and load them down with sins and led away with various laws, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jabiris resisted Moses, so these also resist the truth, men of corrupt minds. How did that mind become corrupt? Agreement of corruption. It became corrupt because what they agreed with. Disapproved concerning the faith. A corrupt mind will not be a faith mind. But they will progress no further. Wait a minute. If they can't progress no further, it means the devil has come to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. For their following will be manifested to all as theirs also was. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to be in Antioch and Icum, or Icum, and Lystra, which, what persecutions? I endured, and out of them all, the Lord, what? Delivered me. Now, he was persecuted for righteousness' sake. Amen? He didn't bring these perse I mean, I guess you might say he brought them on himself, but because he was telling the truth. He knew what was going to happen. You're going to be persecuted for telling the truth. Amen? Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecutions. Are the Christians being persecuted? Yes, all over the world. On the internet. They're being blocked out. I can't tell you how many people that, uh, and um, journalists that are Christians that I used to follow on the internet have been wiped off. They're now on, what do you call that again? Beat shoot? Bit shoot. 
You can go there instead of YouTube. Bit shoot. Like bit shoot, bit shoot. It won't bite you, though. The other ones will bite you. I mean, where'd you get with a name of YouTube anyways? What the heck is that? YouTube. <laughs> you too. Praise God. Hallelujah. Verse 13, which is very important. But evil men and imposters will grow what? Worse and worse. In other words, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse all around us. Amen? I mean, that's what's happening right now. It's worse. It's never been so worse. And it's going to get worse and worser. And worse this until we get worsed out. Hallelujah. But evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being what? How are they being deceived? Because corruptible seed they agreed with. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures or being from a born again state of being, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Wow. Impostors will get worse, not being connected to the spirit of truth, under control by false doctrines, always shutting down the truth. They act a roaring lion. They have big mouths. They don't want you to speak. I don't know if you've heard of the safe spaces now. They got safe spaces. In colleges, they got safe spaces. This is my space. It's safe place, space. We don't have a discussion. I have my say, but you don't. That's what it means. They're in colleges now. There was a police department that had the same thing. Schools have the same thing. I mean, they tried to bring it in the White House. You know, President Trump. <laughs> I got your safe place, honey. <laughs> Praise God. If we had enough bold people like Trump, this would be great. But see, he knows he was sent in there by God. He knows that heaven's backing him. He ain't afraid of them. He's not afraid of their big mouths. He's not afraid of all their persecutions. He's not afraid of any of that stuff. Because he knows of God before him who can be against them. Now they have prayer meetings in there every day. There's no more demonic prayer rugs. Hallelujah. Praise God. Impostors will get worse and worse and worse. They got big mouths. They lie. They cause deceptions. They have false accusations. They have false whistleblowers. They're coming up with everything they can right now. It's incredible. Anything that they can come up with that's a lie to accuse. You know why? They're fighting for their life because they're about to get busted. I'm telling you, the Democratic Party is going to come down. Because God's not putting up with it. That's my dad. Daniel 12. Oh, Daniel. Hallelujah. Before the fall. Now the word tells us all kinds of things before the fall. They'll be called the, the, the beginnings of sorrows. Earthquakes, famines, all kinds of things. Before the fall. He always warns us before the fall. If we're listening. Daniel 12, verse 1. At that time, Michael, the archangel, shall stand up 
the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, Jerusalem, Israel. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. So we haven't gotten there yet, but we're building up to it. Everyone who is found written in the book will be delivered. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. End time prophecy. He's saying there's going to be a lot of confusion. And where there's confusion, there's all kinds of evil. He said this confusion will invade the earth and bring increasing of technology, of deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, which will cause lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and continued pride of life. I'll promote all of these areas. They'll use the internet. they use all of this technology, cell phones, anything that they can use to part, impart corruptible seeds. They will cause evil, deceptive delicacies and corruptible strongholds. And what this is going to cause is a sealing by the mark of the beast. Does everybody understand? This is going to eventually cause a sealing of the mark of the beast. Because the image of the beast is technology. And the mark will be brought by technology also. In Revelation chapter 13. All of this is leading up to it. The word says that in the latter days that God is going to allow strong delusion to come. That's why so many people are still veiled. They're veiled of what's going on in the political arena. They're still promoting those things that God hates. In verse 11. Revelation 13 verse 11. And then I saw another beast. What's a beast represent? Fallen angel. Coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast. And in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast. Whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down from heaven. On the earth, in the sight of men. Who else did this? Mo Moses, right? M remember our Elijah? Moses brought plagues. Elijah brought fire. So they're going to imitate the two prophets, if they can. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power, 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 power. Now, wait a minute. He was granted pride, power, reserve, amen, in demonic entities. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as who would worship the image of the beast to be killed. Might be a robot. I don't know. Some kind of moving thing. You ever gone to Disney and seen those things moving? I mean, they got robot dogs now. Did you see it? I wouldn't want to be one that's short-circuited. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 16. And he calls us all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand, which means service. 
and on their forehead, which means because they're controlled. Thought. Thoughts bring service. What you think is what you will serve. And that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So we see that this is around the corner. It's already happening in other nations. Third world countries, it's already happening. People are already getting marks, getting chips. They can't buy or sell. China will probably be the first one to enforce this, which they are already. They're doing face scans now. You can't do anything without a face scan. China is one of the most demonic countries in the world. Heavy duty demonic. You know that the president is elected for life? That's sick. It's, a, it's bad enough we got politicians that are life politicians. They should only serve four years and out. They will receive a mark on their hand for service and a mark on their head because they will be controlled. They'll, their thoughts will be corrupted. In Ezekiel chapter 9, and then one more scripture. Ezekiel 9. See, you and I are considered sealed by the Spirit. As long as we maintain that seal, you're all right. Don't sell your seal. It's like selling your birthright. In verse 1, is everybody there? Ezekiel 9, verse 1. Then the Lord called out in my hearing with a loud voice saying, Let those who have charge over the city draw near, each with a deadly weapon in his hand. And suddenly six men came from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north, each in his battle and with his battle axe in his hand. One man among them was clothed with linen and had a writer's inkhorn at his side. They went in and stood beside the bronze altar. Then the glory of God of Israel had gone up from the cherub where it had been to the threshold of the temple. And he called to the man clothed with linen who had the writer's inkhorn at his hand, side. And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry over the what? abominations that are done within it. This is happening now. God is sealing those who are interceding and crying over what is going on in this world. The abominations that are done within it. And to the others he said in my hearing, go after him to the city and kill. Do not let your eyes spare nor have any pity. This will come. Utterly slay old and young men, maidens and little children of women. But do not come near anyone on whom is the mark. And begin at my what? Sanctuary. So they began with the elders who were before the temple. Then he said to them, defile the temple and fill the courts with the slain. Go out. And they went out and killed in the city. So it was that while they were killing them that I was left alone. And I fell on my face and I cried out. And I said, Oh, Lord God, will you destroy all the remnant of Israel in the pouring out of your wrath on Jerusalem? Then he said to me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great. And the land is full of bloodshed and the city full of perversity. For they say, The Lord has forsaken the land and the Lord does not see. Doesn't that seem to be happening right now? And as for me also, my eye will neither spare nor will I have pity, but I will recompense their deeds on their own head. Just then the man clothed with linen, who had the inkhorn at his side, reported back and said, We have done as you commanded me. This is known as the mark of righteousness. The mark of wickedness is the mark of destruction. You have to ask yourself, are you carrying the right mark today? 
And I'm going to close with 2 Corinthians 6. Everybody's marked. Oh, hallelujah. We got a lot of false prophets, a lot of false teachers, doctrines of demons, false religions, false politicians, false governors, mayors, all kinds of stuff. They're all liars. Many of them are liars, but you'll know them by their fruit. If they don't promote righteousness, if they're promoting abortion, if they're promoting perversity, same-sex marriage, they're not gods. And they are marked for destruction. Can you imagine the whole Democratic Party is marked for destruction? And God is warning. He's crying out for their turn. Many people, you know, the words of the word say, the road is difficult, the gate is difficult. Not many enter it. Few are what? Called. Few are chosen. Many are called, but few are what? Chosen. It's not always how you begin, it's how you end. Amen? So you can't go back. You can't go by what? If, what was, how it was, you can't go back. You can't live from the past. You live from the future. You cut those things from your past. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been, and how you've done it, or what you didn't do or what you did do. If you're truly repentant, you've let it go. You stepped away from it. You don't want to touch it, agreement, or associate with it. And you step into the new. And then you accept consequences. Whatever God wants us. Why? Because it's called reaping what we sow. But he'll use our consequences to train us up. Amen? 2 Corinthians 6, verse something. 1. <laughs> Let's speak it, okay? We then as workers together with him also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time I have heard you. In the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We give no offense in anything that our ministry may not be blamed. But in all things we commend ourselves as ministers of God in much patience, tribulations, in needs, in distresses, in stripes, imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in sleeplessness, in fastings, by purity, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, and as having nothing but yet possessing all things. O oh, Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own agreements. Does everybody see that? Your own agreements, affections, emotional agreements. Your own agreements have brought this on to you. Now in return for the same, I speak as to children. You also be open. Do not be what? Unevenly yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what, what? Agreement. What, 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 and what? Agreement. Everyone say agreement. Has the temple of God with an accursed item? That's what an idol is. For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I'll be their God. I'll be their dad. And they shall be my people. If they do something, come out. Come out from among them and be separate, sanctified, says the Lord. 
and don't touch and agree with unclean things, and I'll receive you, and I'll be a father to you, and you'll be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. That's what separates us. Sanctification, separation. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and discernment. It separates us. So do we express the character of Christ? That we walk in submission and humility? That we are not takers, we are givers. Amen? We are givers. You and I carry life. What an honor and blessing it is to carry the truth and the life. See, you can't give what you don't have. If you don't have a new life, you can't give it. If you don't carry a humble spirit, you can't give it. If you don't carry the truth, you can't give it. You may know the truth, but if you don't practice it, how can you give it? The world is looking for you. Because they're looking for him. And we are now the body, and he is the head. We got to live in a military mindset and not a religious one. Amen? Because he is the chief and commander, and we are at war. And it is a matter of life and death. And when we get in front of him, one thing we don't want to be shameful for us knowing that we could have done more than what we did. Amen? Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you. Again, we ask for your mercies and grace. Lord, we don't want to waste any time because time's running out. I pray today an impartation to each and every one of reality. Would you give them eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive, that each and every one of us will set you before us, that we may be directed by your spirit and not by false agreements. <laughs>